forward. CoolFit is a pre-insulated pipe system based on George Fisher's proven ABS system. Because the external polyurethane insulation hinders the use of common sockets, CoolFit utilizes novel double nipples, which are solvent cemented to the inside of the pipe. CoolFit has been on the market since 2001 and is very well accepted with end users and installers alike due to the considerable time saving during assembly as well as its excellent insulating properties. Tools and Auxiliary Equipment In addition to the tools already used for ABS, further equipment is required for the efficient and safe assembly of CoolFit piping systems. A calibrating tool, a deburrer, burner or hot air gun, heat proof gloves, a Stanley knife, cartridge press, Tangit PEPP cleaner. Preparation. To ensure safety on the worksite, please pay attention to the following points. Ensure that the worksite is properly ventilated. Take into account that solvent fumes are heavier than air. Avoid open flames during cleaning and solvent cementing. Pay attention to the advice given in the solvent cement manufacturer's material safety data sheets and use the solvent resistant gloves described. Follow the local safety rules and inform the site manager when using a burner with open flame. Cutting pipe to length. Cool fit pipes and fittings up to D110 can be joined without calibration after being cut to length according to the Z measurement method. It is essential that cuts are done at right angles to the pipe axis. Deburr the PE jacket and ABS pipe after cutting. Remove swarf. Camfer the inside of the pipe to an angle of 45 degrees. The deburring tool is good for doing this. Clean the inside of the pipe as well as the double nipple with Tangit cleaner. Use fresh white lint-free absorbent paper. Mark the joining length on the inside of the pipe with a pen. This helps to apply the correct amount of solvent cement later. ABS Solvent Cement Stir the solvent cement well before use. Cement running off unevenly or in lumps as shown here may not be used as its solvent content is too low. Diluting the cement is not allowed. A perfect quality cement flows evenly and forms streaks. The batch used, shown on the bottom of the can, may be noted on the attached label and added to the acceptance report later. Unopened cans of ABS solvent cement may be used for at least 24 months after the filling date given on the bottom of the can. Cementing. The solvent cement is applied with a flat brush. The best size of brush is half as wide as the pipe to be cemented. First apply a complete and even layer of cement in an axial direction to cover the entire inner circumference of the pipe up to the marking indicating the joining length. Apply the solvent cement less generously to the pipe than to the double nipple to avoid excess cement on the inside of the pipe. Solvent cement is applied more generously to the spigot on the double nipple in an even and complete coat on the whole outside circumference. Immediately join both parts completely without twisting and hold for a few seconds. Then wipe off the adhesive bead on the outside of the joint. Now slip the shrink sleeve over the pipe to seal the joint later. Next, clean the other spigot of the double nipple as well as the socket of the cool fit fitting with Tangent Cleaner. Now apply a complete and even layer of cement in an axial direction to cover the entire socket of the fitting. Apply the solvent cement less generously to the fitting than to the double nipple to avoid having excess cement inside the fitting. Then apply solvent cement in the same way, but more generously to the spigot of the double nipple. Immediately join both parts without twisting, utilizing the useful markings on the outside of the fitting and hold for a few seconds. The 3D animation 
shows the principle of the inner joint in detail. Application of solvent cement on the inside of the pipe and the spigot of the nipple, joining and waiting for the initial curing. After joining, excess cement must be removed. Leave the pipe system open at its lowest ends to allow solvent fumes to exit the system. Please note, it is essential to work efficiently when joining. The open time of the solvent cement is about one minute at 20 degrees Celsius. Higher temperatures reduce the open time. For pipe diameters of D75 or greater, it is advisable to work in teams of two. After joining pipes up to D140, do not apply mechanical loads for at least 10 minutes. For larger dimensions, allow 30 minutes initial curing time before carefully continuing work. Further information is to be found in the George Fisher Planning Fundamentals. Cool fit may be joined at ambient temperatures between plus 5 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius. Make sure that any condensation is removed from the joining surfaces when working at low temperatures. No joining should be done below plus 5 degrees Celsius. The time before applying pressure for testing or use of the pipe depends on the ambient temperature. For example, at 20 degrees Celsius, 24 hours are required. Details are given in the George Fisher Planning Fundamentals and are shown in the table. Finally, thoroughly rinse or ventilate the pipeline to remove residual solvent fumes. Unless there is a danger of freezing, it's best to leave the pipe filled after pressure testing until it is used. Insulation and shrinking. After successfully completing the pressure test, the inspection gaps must be closed. Clean the outer PE coat where the shrink sleeve is to be applied with Tangit PE PP cleaner. Wrap the gap filler into the gap between the cool fit components, taking care that the gap is completely filled. Apply the hot melt tape around the complete circumference of the gap. Place the shrink sleeve over the middle of the gap and press it onto the tape on opposing sides. The 3D animation shows the separate steps. Wrapping the gap filler, applying the hot melt tape and heating the shrink sleeve. Use a burner to heat the shrink sleeve evenly on all sides at right angles to the pipe axis. Use an orange open flame to avoid overheating and damaging the material. When the creases in the shrink sleeve disappear at the circumference of the sleeve, the heating process can be ended. As an alternative, where an open flame is not allowed, a powerful hot air gun can be used. Longer shrinkage times may be necessary. Calibration. Cool fit pipes of D140 diameter and larger must be calibrated on the inside to ensure that a proper joint could be made using a double nipple. George Fisher developed a special pipe calibration tool for this purpose. Please regard the enclosed detailed handbook. First, camphor the inside of the pipe to facilitate the beginning of the calibration cut. After assembly of the correct jaws and cutting head spindle for the pipe diameter, introduce the calibration tool into the pipe parallel to the pipe axis up to the identification mark and threaded spindle. Lightly lift the head of the tool to ensure good alignment. Tighten the jaws with the spring handle. The cutting head with the cutting head spindle is now wound evenly using both hands until the cutting head is flush with the end of the pipe. During this process, material is removed from the inside of the pipe. When the correct calibration depth has been reached, the tool is rotated anti-clockwise to remove it from the pipe. 
Now the jaws can be loosened and the tool removed. Take care not to scratch the inside of the pipe. After calibration, camphor the inside of the pipe to an angle of 45 degrees. The deburring tool is good for this. The suitable double nipple can now be dry fitted to test the calibration. Try to introduce the test gauge into the gap without undue force. You should not be able to insert the gauge completely into the gap between the DI nipple and the calibrated pipe. Long shrink sleeve for straight reductions. Cool fit pipes can be connected to one another with a DI D red reducing nipple and a double D DI nipple to reduce the pipe diameter by one dimensional step. The inspection gap is then twice as wide as for a normal double nipple connection. The outer PE jacket also shows the dimensional step in diameter. To close the gap between the two pipes, a long shrink sleeve is used. The inspection gap is wrapped with two gap fillers until fully filled. Hot melt tape is applied around the circumference to either side of the inspection gap. The shrink sleeve is placed in the middle over the gap and pressed onto the tape on opposite sides. Use a burner to heat the shrink sleeve evenly on all sides at right angles to the pipe axis. Use an orange open flame to avoid overheating and damaging the material. When the creases in the shrink sleeve disappear at the circumference of the sleeve, the heating process can be ended. Shrink tape. For some applications, the insulated inspection gap can be closed using a shrink tape instead of a shrink sleeve. Cut the shrink tape to a length 10 centimeters longer than the outer circumference of the pipe to be insulated. The shrink tape is wound with the hot melt side on the inside around the inspection gap overlapping 10 centimeters at the end. Use a burner to heat the shrink sleeve evenly on all sides at right angles to the pipe axis. Use an orange open flame to avoid overheating and damaging the material. If necessary, the shrink tape can be pressed on by hand. Use a heat-resistant glove to do this. When the shrink sleeve lies flat and even over the circumference of the pipe jacket, the heating process can be ended. Hot melted glue discharged at the edges of the tape is an indication for properly heated and sealed shrink tape. End cap. The open face of the polyurethane insulation at the end connections of CoolFit must be sealed. End caps are used to do this. Cover the face completely with silicon glue. The sealing material is available in a tube or a cartridge. Apply the end cap and press on tightly. Shrink cap, for example, at reductions on T-joints. Larger reductions, as can occur at T-branches, are closed using shrink caps. Hot melt tape is not required here, as the inside of the caps is already fitted with hot melt. Use a burner to heat the shrink sleeve evenly on all sides at right angles to the pipe axis. Use an orange open flame to avoid overheating and damaging the material. If necessary, the shrink tape can be pressed on by hand. Use a heat-resistant glove to do this. When the shrink sleeve adheres evenly at the circumference of the pipe, the heating process can be ended.